man i got to make this quick because my phone dying i gotta start deleting stuff and or get a new phone anyway i'm in my sukkot i'm uh chilling there's my heater my power source my table for my incense and food uh, i got a queen size up in here six person tent i probably use something smaller uh anyway i'm in the back chilling so i had a long video and i'm just going to break it down like this just make it as short as possible we are in the middle of a war and the reason why we're in the middle of a war is because it's about power of the next coming centuries the international illuminated edomite bankers want control of the globe and the only way they can do that is through they control their money saudi arabia did not renew their deal to sell their oil in nothing but u.s dollars right so dig the move here saudi arabia said go screw yourself we're going to sell our oil using whatever we want america said all right cool every time another country uses uh, its own gold-backed currency or currency that has it's not fiat that has power behind it the united states looks for a reason to either do a regime change uh cry foul and say their leader is doing something bad to their people and we send agents over there and sabotage or eliminate and we get someone that is u.s friendly in their office it's the same old playbook that they always play um with that being said saddam did it we look for a reason to bomb him go in there killed him Gaddafi did it wanted to start his own gold back currency i think it was the dinar went in there found a reason to kill him and now with the BRICS nations, you got nations working together, Russia, China, India, and Pakistan, Brazil, so on and so forth, to where they're going to use their own currency outside the United States control, outside the international uh, banking Edomite cartels control. Yeah, we could go to war with them, but now it's going to be even bigger. Now they know the only way to keep global supremacy and to keep people under our fucking foot is to go to war people don't understand that this is early stages of war they're setting up war um the only difference is is that they're willing to destroy everything before they lose their control and their power so that means going into a thermal nuclear war with all these different superpowers just so they can maintain power and be on top they're going to do that so the international bankers are to the point where their factions are bumping heads against each other one side of the Illuminati, international bankers, they want to keep America around to keep that power. The other side, um, that's on more of the Eastern powers, they want to get rid of America because in order to enact their global takeover, countries like America and the freedoms that, you know, the Americans have over here don't really exist in other countries. Um, so they want to shut this down. But you got that one banking family wants to hold on to that power. And we can't just go in and bomb other superpowers. Like, we got to find a reason. So this is leading us all up into that that grand finale. Because while they're in the middle of trying to figure out who's going to be in control of the next, you know, world order and generations and the, the ways of the dollar are going away with, that means American lifestyle is gone. It's over with. Uh, the Gentiles don't realize that this is what's happening in real time. That's why when I go to the market to purchase food or different items, I chuckle to myself and laugh because it's messed up because they don't realize the game is over with. It's over with. But uh, with that being said, I'm going to read from a scripture um, that explains everything in one full circle that I believe personally. And hopefully you, you, you sit down and you read this and you go through it and it, it hits somewhere. But I'm going to read this to you because this is wholeheartedly my foundation as an Israelite, what I believe in. So we're going to go here. Jeremiah 33. Okay. I am going to start because there's a lot here. But you know what? I want to start at the points that, that make sense to me. We'll go to Jeremiah 33. We'll start at verse 7. It's verse 6. It says, Behold, I will bring... I will bring it heath. Oh no, bring it health. Oh good lord. 
I will bring it health and cure and I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captivity of Yahuda and the captivity of Yasharal to return and will build them as the first. And I will cleanse them and I will cleanse them. Didn't say nothing about no Yeshua or Jesus cleansing before. He says, and I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. You know, so that right there eliminates the need for some type of savior there. Everybody keep dick riding. All right. So we're going to go over to verse 11. This is the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the pride, the voice of them that shall say praise Yah for Yah is good for his mercy endures forever. And all of them that shall bring sacrifice of praise into the house of Yah, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land. Remember, when we bring sacrifice, praise into the house of Yah. Okay, verse 12. Am I skipping that? Hold on, go up above 12. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, says Yah. 12. Thus save Yah against, no, again in this place, which is desolate without man and without beast. And in all the cities thereof shall be a habitation of shepherds, causing their flocks to lie down in the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the valley, and in the cities of the Negev, and in the land of Benjamin, and in the places of Jerusalem, and in the cities of Yehuda shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that tells them, says Yah. So we're going to have flocks again. It says, Behold, the days come, says Yah, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Yasharal and the house of Yahuda. And in those days and in that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David. And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. So I don't get, I don't understand where they get this Yahweh shot crap from. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up. So that means it's going to be a child unto David and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Yahuda be saved and in Jerusalem shall dwell safe, safely. And this is the name whereby she shall be called. Yah. Siskinu or Yah our righteousness. For thus saith Yah, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Yasharel, neither shall the priest of Leviath or Levium or Levi want a man before me to offer ascending smoke offerings and to kindle oblations and to do sacrifices continually. And the word of Yah came unto Jeremiah saying, Thus saith Yah, if you can break my covenant of day and my covenant of night, and that there should not be day and night in the season. Then also may my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon the throne. And within the Levite priests, my ministers as host of heaven cannot be numbered. Neither the sand of the sea measured. So I will multiply the seed of David, my servant and the Levites or Levium that minister unto me moreover the word of Yahuwah came to Jeremiah saying consider you not what this people has spoken saying the two families of Yah Yahuda of Yah have chosen he has even cast them off thus they have despised my people that they should be no more a nation before them but concentrate and focus on the multiply this seed of David is going to have children that means that this seed of David is going to live and he's eventually going to die because when he is forced to grow up in those days, he's going to grow up and he's going to execute judgment and righteousness in the land. Not now. When he grows up and then they're going to multiply him and the Levite priest because we're going to continue to sacrifice. Because here in verse seven, Yah made it clear that he is going to pardon our iniquities. So this kind of like destroys that whole New Testament thing. I, I personally think like the New Testament has been tampered with. There may be some truth to it. 
there's a lot of truth in there, but the, the scriptures have been tampered with. But Jeremiah 33, this is this is my foundation right here. This is Yah's promise of what he's going to do. Clear as day. Peace, y'all. I'll see y'all next feast day. Shalom.